Casual Geographic has a couple of videos that we are going to start right now. The last one that we watched was all cute sweet. and wholesome yeah. and sweet and innocent. We're just doing the exact opposite of that. Yep. We're going to... Ten horrible ways exact animals can end you. End you, a.k.a. Thanos snap your ass oh straight gosh. out of existence. <laughs> okay? What is the worst way that you think that an animal could end you? Some people don't. Do you include insects as animals? I mean, you can. I feel like you're thinking of something specific, well, I mean, so like, just go ahead. <laughs> like, bugs and parasites can do some shit to you that's just like... I'm thinking of like a like an animal, like a big animal. Being I mean, mauled by like a, a tiger lot, or a yeah, bear. Yeah, because you're going to live through a lot of that more yeah, that's than gonna, likely. That's going to suck. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I say it like it's going to happen to me. <laughs> I've been terrified of that. I remember um, growing up... You know, I've played in the woods a lot. Sometimes, a lot of the time, Nikki, alone. I hate to break this to you, but you just straight up lived in the woods. Okay. I lived in the woods. <laughs> you didn't play out in the woods. You I lived, lived in, in the, the woods, woods, but I also went out, like, away from my house where no one was and played a lot, which is kind of dangerous looking back yeah, on I it. Yeah, I did the same thing. Um, But I'm, like, nowhere near town or anything, and my dad had to, like, school me on, okay... If you run into a bear, because I didn't have a knife, I didn't keep mace. Well, good luck with a knife should if ha- the bear's trying But to- I should have had something. He was like, you just play dead. So, like, it was a thing that I would kind of practice. It was like playing dead because a bear was going to sniff me and stuff. This thing's going to be like all up on you, smelling you and shit. So you have to, like, keep still. It wasn't just like a... It was a, it's a situation where I was like trained on if a bear tries to attack me. Could you see me? I would just be playing dead and then the bear starts smelling at me. I get so scared. Giggle I'm yourself. just like <laughs> just your pants. shit my pants while the well, bear's... You die, uh, when you die, you do do do. So it's a real strategy. I'm just playing possum all those times I've been sick and shit my pants. Alright, here we go. Ten horrible ways animals can kill you. <laughs> get, get to it. Hope y'all didn't think you were safe just because Halloween's over. This video was actually supposed to be posted on Halloween, but um, I don't even have an excuse. It'd just be like that. Not much of an <laughs> intro this time, so here's 10 horrible ways animals can put your autobiography in the history section. Not necessarily in order, but it does get brutal, so I'm going to do something I've never done before. Viewer discretion is very much advised. That's oh, the only warning you're going to get. When that music starts, it's up. Also, I kind of owe y'all more Halloween content, so if this gets a certain number of likes, I'll do a part two. All that aside, let's get and to the does. content. Oh, no! When you think of some of the apex predators on the planet, Not you might think of heavyweights like open the door? lions, Ooh. bears, crocodiles, and of course you got the biggest bully in the ocean. Not the seal, but the killer whale dragging it. But what you probably don't think of is a prehistoric steroid gecko found on only remote islands in the world. Steroid and that's gecko. exactly what makes the Komodo dragon Komodo one of the most dragon. underrated yeah. killers on the planet. This homicide lizard can grow to 10 feet long, weigh nearly 200 pounds, can swim, and can run faster than your mental health is prepared for. This video isn't sped up, but the most lethal thing about them is something you can't see. The Venom. Komodo dragon has no up to 60 razor sharp serrated kitchen knives for teeth tough enough to dissect the full grown buffalo and tear flesh in chunks. But it's how they catch their prey that's unsettling. It was believed that a Komodo septic bite was potent enough to cause his victim to retire to a bacterial infection. But it turns out this modern day dinosaur uses a toxic venom that it injects yeah. into its prey. This venom reduces the body's blood clotting abilities and makes it more likely for you to bleed out once wounded. Other symptoms include lowering of blood pressure, shock, and muscle paralysis, and that last one's going to be real important later. The venom's so powerful that just one bite can be a death sentence for a tank like a water buffalo. Which means Komodos don't have to waste energy trying to chase down a meal. All they have to do is critically wound their prey and then wait for them to die. And because these reptiles that time left behind are only found on remote islands, and they have a borderline disrespectful sense of smell. There's almost no point on the island you can go where this lizard Liam Neeson won't eventually track you down. Oh, and the reason paralysis shit. being a symptom is such a problem is because Komodos won't exactly wait for their prey to be past tense. Just as long as they're too weak to fight back or run away. Cause these lizards will eat their prey alive with the only relief coming when you eventually flatline the blood loss. And even though Venom's the main suspect, you can still get clapped by a slow painful bacterial infection. The first response of animals like buffalo after they've been wounded is to escape into nearby water. Going into unclean water with an open wound is how you lose your life to a horrific case of sepsis and again, your life doesn't have to end for his meal to begin. 
Not only have Komodo dragons been known to attack humans, they've been recorded seeking out human graves, digging out the corpses, and then feeding on whatever human remains they find. Nothing on this island is safe from a Komodo, not even not another Komodo, because Komodo hatchlings will spend most of their childhood up in the trees. Why? Adult Komodos are cannibals that'll devour any young dragons they run into, even if it ends up being their own children. We're talking about a 10-foot venomous steroid chameleon that'll track you down no matter where you go and will friendly fire its own kind. And it's only the first animal on this list. God damn. We talked about these winged bastards a couple of yes. videos ago, so this is going to be a quick one. Now, plenty of birds eat other birds, but few are as sadistic about it as these overgrown ice vultures. Even though giant petrels are scavengers, they will target and jump weaker injured penguins as well as snatch up any unaccompanied penguin chicks they can find. Just like a lot of animals yep, you're going to see on this list, giant petrels will eat their struggling prey alive in groups and they have a nasty habit of breaking in through the back door. I can't show you, but there are videos of these prison pigeons pulling out the intestines of a penguin through its anus. All while the penguin was alive and fighting for his life and the sanctity of his booty. He lost both. And it's not just penguins that get victimized. Giant petrels will attack other seabirds like the albatross and put them, them out of commission by forcing them underwater until they drown. But nobody gets it worse than penguins. The giant petrel is so vicious that once one snatches a chick, its parents usually won't even bother trying to save its life. Meaning Happy Feet could have ended with Mumble getting brutally shot shanked by a gang of flying booty bandits, all while his parents just sat and watched. And since a penguin's vital organs are protected by a layer of fat, penguins can take a lot of damage before permanently peacing out. Alternatively, penguins can suffer through hours of abuse before experiencing the sweet release of death. One researcher watched a gang of about 20 petrels tear apart a penguin that had already been mauled by a fur seal until there was nothing but a skeleton with feet attached. Don't think you're safe. The southern giant petrel has been nicknamed a stinker because they'll feed on any rotting, decaying carcass. To the point where these birds will tailgate boats and consume whatever foul, putrid- <laughs> Hold on! You can't just suddenly drop! Oh, by the way, is that- <laughs> they nicknamed this motherfucker the Stinker. <laughs> it goes from this ungodly death machine to just like, can't you see somebody well? with one of those hamburger masks rolling in and be like, oh God, something hurt my ass just then. The Stinker. <laughs> and then running off like, you can't just give it a name like the I wish it stinker. was like that instead of what it actually does. <laughs> I know, but then they just give it that kind of name. That's not right. The fucking stinker. Come on, man. This is what... No. Nastiness the sailors dumped off. Petrels eat the same way they live, with no conscience. So if you're ever injured or incapacitated somewhere in the Antarctic, pray that help finds you before this bird does. You won't be a fan of how that movie ends. The stinker. Jesus. It'll end the same way if you're ever chased by a pack of African wild dogs. In a neighborhood with lions and hyenas, these dogs are actually the most efficient killers on the plains with a hunting success rate of about 80%. These African bush cujos have a very complex and nuanced hunting strategy. They just keep running. These killer canines can run you down at speeds of nearly 40 miles per hour for a distance of over 3 miles and in a sprint they can clock in at a blistering 45. All running away does is delay the inevitable, it's like hitting the snooze button on death. Once the prey gets chased into exhaustion, ah! the dogs will clamp those jaws ah! around the panicking prey's snout and flank and force it to the ground. And for the third time on this list, they don't wait for you to stop breathing to start eating. And the bigger and stronger you are, the more you suffer. Cause they're able to put down animals like warthogs in as little as 2-5 to five minutes. But tankier animals like the wildebeest can spend the last 40 minutes of its life being gruesomely mauled by a pack of about 15 merciless murder hounds. And once the entire pack has you surrounded, there's virtually zero escape. And African wild dogs have the unsettling habit of starting meals off by tearing a hole in the abdomen and pulling the intestines out so they can get to the oh. organs and fat first. To add insult to life-canceling injury, unlike lions, African wild dogs give puppies priority and let them eat first. So not only would you still get disemboweled, it would be the cutest members of the pack doing it first. Basically, imagine being chased by a gang of animals that never get tired, while knowing once they catch you, they'll confiscate your intestines and feed on your organs. All while you wait for the man upstairs to call your number. What could possibly be worse than that? Well... <sighs> hyenas are everything African wild dogs are, but on juice. And even though hyenas are genetically closer to cats and mongooses, hyenas basically behave like dogs on steroids. 
Thanks to Lion King. People believe hyenas are were just right, cowardly me. scavengers that only survived by scrounging a living off of other Damn, animals. he went Luke Skywalker The truth is, not only shit. do hyenas personally murk 70 to 80% of their meals, they're actually more efficient at it than lions are. And it's all because hyenas and African wild dogs have one very unsettling thing in common. They're both serial killers on Duracell, meaning the bastards never get tired. Spotted hyenas can run at high speeds for over 5 miles without even thinking about being Shit. tired. Which is why they don't have to ambush or one-shot their prey like lions, they'll just chase them into oblivion until one of them gives up. And hyenas don't give up. It doesn't help that hyenas have jaws strong enough to amputate a rhino. With a bite strength of about a thousand pounds of force, hyenas are tough enough to eat virtually any part of an animal. They have such a habit of eating the bones of the deceased that their poop often comes out white. With a vice grip for a mouth and the eating habits of a coffin, if a clan of hyenas is your serious finale, then the only thing your family will have left to bury are memories. Cause once you're on this overgrown mongoose's meal prep, there won't be a lot of you left to put in the casket. And since there can be up to 80 members in a clan, and just one can take down 30 pounds of meat in one sitting, you would basically be a Ritz cracker to them. But if I'm being honest, the real reason hyenas are on this list is because of this video. And guys, y'all gonna feel this one. Oh no. no. Oh, 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 oh. We have to watch it though. Are you tapping out? We have to watch it. But it's going to be painful to watch Hold it. Hold up. Don't tell me they're about to rip this motherfucker's balls This was off. in a different compilation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think so. I can't look. Hyenas have a devious habit of going for the family honeypot, but it is for a reason. Hyenas don't have the ability to instantly end their prey the way big it's cats so do. so fucking cute. So for larger animals like the buffalo, it's way easier to perform a hands-free Why, God? Just wait for blood loss to do the work for you. Why, God? On your baby factory, but with the force of an adult moose stepping Why? Up. Yeah. I hate that it has to be like this. animal's probably going to be the most unexpected on this list, but let me paint a picture. Take a wolverine, right? Put it on creatine, give it the personality of a power tool, and then dump it in the same area code as some of the most vicious carnivores in the jungle. This face of generational trauma belongs to the sloth bear. Yes, the one from Jungle Book. Sloth bears may not look like much, they're easily dwarfed by some of the more brolic bears, one of which may be on this list. They're not even super notorious predators, as insectivores, a sloth bear's grocery list is mostly ants We've and termites. Seen sloth bears. But don't let the sloth in its name fool you, these furry chainsaws know how to get active. Sloth bears share an environment with leopards and tigers, and tigers have been known to actively hunt and eat them. Which is why the sloth bear is one of the most aggressively homicidal bears out there. Even though they have a size disadvantage, a pissed off slothy has been known to drive off even the most motivated tiger. And sometimes these bears clutch a 2v1. And since sloth bears can't escape in trees like American black wow. bears, it's like nature told this dark skinned poo that violence was his only option. Years of character development means this demon yoga will view shit. almost anything alive as a threat, and that includes humans. It looks like sloth bear attacks are incredibly brutal. Skin. The same claws they use to destroy concrete like termite mounts can disembowel you with one swipe. Should and unlike we... grizzlies, because sloth bears do have to worry about predators, they're much more likely to attack unprovoked. According to first hand accounts, sloth bears will often maul their victims and then chew and suck on their limbs I until they're they reduced were, like, to a bloody mushy docile. Pulp. Sloth bears also typically go for the face, incapacitating their victims while biting and slashing to the point where neither your mother or your iPhone can recognize you. And of course, an animal that motivated usually won't stop until you're not moving. Which is why, even in tiger country, more people get sent to the emergency room by the baloos of the jungle. And if you're really unlucky, if one's able to sever a critical artery with those adamantium fingernails, then your series finale will involve you bleeding into the afterlife. One man was able to survive a particularly brutal mauling at the hands, or paws, of this bear. He recalled feeling immense pressure as the bear tackled him, put its full weight on him, and crushed his leg in its jaws like a celery stick. When the bear was put out of commission, the man thought he got off easy. Until he looked at his leg and realized the bear had torn an entire chunk of his flesh, to the point where he could see his muscles moving. And in rare cases, these bears have been known to stab pad. One infamous bear known as the Sloth Bear of Mysore had a human body count of at least 12 people while having also severely mauled another dozen. So when I call this bear a box cutter with claws, I'm talking about both its personality and the way its victims tend to look after, but of course, it's not the only bear on this list. Cause when you're one of the few animals that'll actively hunt humans, you're guaranteed a spot. Oh, Thanks to global warming, bears. most of the polar bears hunting range is now underwater. A desperate polar bear will even attempt to go after walruses, even though walruses can one-shot them with those tusks. Damn. But a starving bear will resort to putting humans on the list if they get the chance. A polar bear is like a maxed out bloodhound. They can smell a seal from a mile away, and they can even track its scent through three feet of ice. Which is why it's been said, if you see this Caucasian carnivore in the wild, it's already too late. 
there's a good chance the bear's been hunting you for hours or even longer. This is Tim Jarvis, and during an expedition in the Arctic, he was allegedly stalked by a polar bear for a total of 10 days. Uh -oh. Now add the fact that they can outswim every heat at the Olympics, and sprint fast enough to get a ticket in a school zone, and you'll see why getting on this ice killer's radar is a death sentence. Remember how African wild dogs tear into their prey while still alive? Bears are just triple XL dogs that usually clamp their jaws on the prey's back to disable it. And the back is usually where they start eating from, with the intestines being ah. one of the first things to get pulled out. Also, polar bears are estimated to have a bite force of about 1,200 pounds per square inch, believed to be strong enough to crack a bowling ball. And if one paw swipes your back, at best you'll be a paraplegic, at worst you'll be a hashtag. And at least sloth bears attack out of self-defense. When a polar bear puts someone on the news, you can be sure it was 100% premeditated. And the worst part of it all is that normally polar bears wouldn't see humans as happy meals. They prefer the no. fat, nutrient-rich seal. But because of what we've done to their hood now, a polar bear doesn't even need to see you or hear you. If you're a mile downwind of a starving polar bear, that could really be all it takes. Remember the rule of thumb. If it's black, fight back. If it's brown, best get on the ground. If it's white like the president, you finna be heaven sent. Shit, man. The African wilderness has some of the most vicious and violent predators on the planet. Some of them we've actually already talked about. So it says a lot that out of all of them, the one nicknamed Black Death is actually a vegetarian. The African Cape Buffalo erases about 200 names from the census each year. That's not counting the people that live but still get severely gored. They're also Ugh. strong enough to rock doll top tiers like lions, hyenas, and of course, people. Those horns aren't just for intimidation. When a Cape Buffalo charges, the hooked end of its horns can get caught under the skin and tear apart the flesh of a predator or a tourist that just doesn't know any better. Of course, at 1,300 pounds, they don't need horns to end you. They Fucking can easily just hell. trample you into a chalk outline. But there's another thing about them that makes them not only a walking obituary, but earned them another nickname, Ugh. the Widowmaker. Because one of the fastest ways to get a divorce is to tell your husband to go hunt a Cape Buffalo because then you'll probably go to bed single. And that's because this Widowmaker is one of the most vengeful animals on Earth. A wounded Cape Buffalo will often retreat and hide in tall grass or brush. Now, if the hunter has more than one brain cell, he'll usually just give up and leave the beast alone. But if you make the mistake of following the injured animal, then you run the risk of getting ambushed and knocked clear into the ground. And after hitting you, the Cape Buffalo will just back up and wait for you to get back on your feet just so they can hit stick you again. They'll keep doing this until you just stop getting up. And that's just what one can do to you. These guys can travel in hoods of up to 200. And these Damn. herds will often circle a possible threat, leaving no possibility for escape. And they'll just keep circling until one eventually sees an opening and attempts to impale you. And the same rules apply. If you're still moving, they're not finished. That kind of attitude is why lions cosplay as house cats when a herd of buffalo is involved. And why hunting one should come with a life insurance package. And out of the entire starting lineup known as the African Big Five, these murder cows are considered to be the biggest threat. But ironically, one of the most feared mammals on the entire continent isn't on this list. Yeah, no suspense here. Hippos are just waterproof horses with a senator's address from hell. Hippos put about 500 names in Twitter bios a year, and that number is probably higher. They're famous for choosing violence with anything in their territory, from antelope and crocodile, Bruh. all the way to lions, <laughs> humans, and literally everything else. Like, if you have a pulse, they'll Woo! find a reason to hate you. In fact, the biggest threat to a hippo's way of life is very literally often another hippo. Because oftentimes when resources are low, bull hippos will see babies as competition and will turn the adorable infants into fish food. Here's a dark joke for you, where did the baby hippo go after the baby shower? Everywhere. He went everywhere. Despite being the third heaviest thing on the planet with legs, hippos can run at speeds of 30 miles per hour. And they can outswim you, or technically outrun because hippos don't swim, they literally run underwater. And I don't think that makes this video any better. But just like actress Tiana Trump, it's that mouth that makes him infamous. Bull hippos have tusks that can max out at 20 inches long, and it can slam their jaws at nearly 2,000 pounds of force. I don't think I'd be getting that close. if you've ever close. seen one eat a watermelon, you already knew that. Which is why the biggest mistake a croc can make is pull up to a hippo pool party, because it can end up getting turned into a purse. And the biggest mistake a person can make is getting too close. I hope this is photoshopped. Hippos are one of those animals that don't need a reason to turn you into a statistic. God. Hippos don't typically eat meat, but their attack style involves using that massive overbite and chewing a person into human applesauce. Jesus. And it's the attacks in water that are the most brutal. Even if you survive, the toll for crossing hippo territory can cost an arm, a leg, multiple broken bones, and even a punctured lung or two. One tourist guide in Zimbabwe was allegedly swallowed by this land well not once, but three times. And you want to know the worst thing about getting deep-throated by this obese demon donkey? Other than the smell, it's knowing that your options are to either stay inside and suffocate or try to escape and end up negotiating your left arm in the process. 
As for the tourist guide, by the time he got out, he had suffered 38 bite wounds, including one so nasty it exposed his lungs and completely crushed one of his arms. This man rescued an orphan baby hippo from a flood and raised him as his own. He even named it Humphrey and said it was like a son to him. Well, Humphrey ended up mauling and mutilating his foster father in the same river he was rescued from. That's honestly how most movies with hippos end. But at least hippos are so massive they're impossible to miss. The next animal is the size of a golf ball but could turn 26 people into a very loaded story on CNN. Something poisonous? The blue ring octopus yep. is a lot of things. Tiny, cute, and it's one of the most venomous things alive. It's armed with a neurotoxin called tetrodotoxin, and the lethal dose for a human could fit on the head of a pin. Plenty of animals are venomous in Australia, from the jellyfish right down to the parries. But there's one disturbing fact about blue ring octopus. The blue ring octopus is so small that most people don't even realize when they've been bitten. And because they're so small and cute, some people will put the octopus in their hands not realizing they're putting their lives in the octopuses. Because not only is tetrodotoxin 10,000 times more powerful than cyanide, the neurotoxin shuts down muscles by blocking sodium channels. This decision can lead to muscle paralysis, respiratory failure, cardiac arrest, and then a permanent rest. Which is why one of the smallest animals on this list can turn you into past tense in as little as 30 minutes. And remember, you don't feel when this blue ring Bundy bites you. Meaning you can hold it like this for 3 seconds and then flatline in the same hour. And if you're swimming while that paralysis hits, uh, use your imagination. Oh, and there's no antidote. All medical professionals can do is hook you up to a respirator and manage your breathing just long enough to keep you alive. But with immediate medical attention, the chances of getting put in a casket by this blue ring hellspawn are actually pretty low. But with a bite that's impossible to feel, it's very possible to not realize you've been wounded. And without medical attention, the chance of your soul getting evicted suddenly becomes a lot higher. Which means this lady just barely Eurostep becoming a name on a stone in one of the worst ways possible. Cause anything that tries this hard to be seen is probably more toxic than future. That goes for octopus and people. Number one. Who's it gonna be? This last one deserves its own viewer discretion warning because in some ways it's the most disturbing animal on this list. Not only does it have the highest human body count, you can be a victim and not even realize it. That's cause it's believed that over 1 billion people in the world are infected with parasitic worms. Mm. They're especially a problem in places no. with limited access to clean drinking water. But don't think this is just some third world problem. All you have to do is swim in waters containing eggs and you can lose the lottery and become a landlord to these parasites. Once inside you, these worms can cause a bunch of nasty infections and complications, but there's one disease that really stands out. These demonic flesh ropes are filarial worms and they're as thin as sewing threads. And their favorite hangout spot is in your lymph nodes, where a bunch of them can block fluids from leaving the body, which can cause tissues in the body to swell almost like a disturbing cartoon. Which is how a worm you need a microscope to see can cause a nightmarish condition known as Elephantiasis, Elephantiasis, the situation where your leg can swell to the same size and color as an elephant's. And it doesn't just give you Dumbo sized cankles. All guidelines will allow me to say is Google South Park Wheelbarrow. Get infected with filarials and you might need one. But the unsettling part is you may never know you've been violated by filarials until it's too late. Millions of people around the world are infected and a lot of them have no idea. Which means of course, statistically, Someone watching this video has to No! Happen. If it makes you feel any better, if you live in America, you apparently can't get infected with filarial worms. But it's you're not safe from the hundreds thing. of other parasites that could turn your insides into an Airbnb. Around the world, hundreds of millions of people are infected with parasitic worms as we speak. And if you happen to be asymptomatic, they can put a whole mortgage down on your body and you would be the last to know. And that's just about it for this video. If you actually enjoyed this video, first of all, you're a psychopath. But also, my Patreon is going to be in the description in case you want to support this very questionable content. In fact, you could have watched this video two days before I posted it on Patreon. But as always, please don't feel like you have to send money in order to show support. Please feel like you have to subscribe, though. I'm not playing with y'all. Subscribe, or I'm just going to assume you have worms. Also, follow my Instagram, if for no other reason but to help me get verified. There's videos on there, too, but honestly, I just want that blue check more than a crippin' Nike athlete. Happy Halloween, drink water, hug your mother, and have a nice day. Even though I probably just ruined it. <sighs> One of your favorite things was the grand I winner and champion. Why you can't get it if you live in America? I don't, I don't know. Or if you're from? Do you say if you're from America? Shorty, are you sleeping? Are you sleepy, little baby? Look at this sleepy thing. Say hi, sleepy. Can you say hi.
Okay, so it's like you give your your pets medication to make sure that you don't get worms. Why do humans not get this type of if you live in this one area that's known to get whatever the fuck that is seems like they could just be like oh, you know what? Take this medication once a month and you won't get it because... I don't think it's a bad thing. They're, they're just not around our area. No, I know not. but some people for some people it's it's relevant. I don't I don't know. I think the worst for me was the the wild dogs ripping the things nuts, pulling the things nuts. Like I kind of forgot about that. Like I yeah. literally like. I mean, there was just so much fucked up shit on that whole list. Yeah, this one was really difficult to get I, through. I didn't know that you could. I didn't know that oh, you were going to be able to. The video? Yeah, I was going to stop the video for you. Yeah, that one, that one really bothered me because you could even like see it like stretching and like just it's just. I don't even know what that feels like, but it's yeah. so painful. I just wanted to be like, <laughs> and it's just, you know, like just like a nice reminder of how brutal things are. You yeah, know? we got it pretty damn good. Like I get to go to the grocery store and all of the meat is already packaged yeah. and I don't get to have to see. I already went through a stage of five years of not eating meat because I watched the videos. I couldn't imagine having to go hunt my food actually with my teeth. Yeah, and you I, mean, also, I know it's different for You animals, also have but... to compete with these motherfuckers that are able to run 45 miles an hour for five miles. You know what really pisses me off? What? How cute baby hippos are. Oh my god. And I never heard of any story of someone adopting a baby hippo really? and raising it. Have you ever heard of that? Yeah, they're mean as shit. I know that they're mean, but there's you plenty would of animals think. that people raise. I've heard like, lions. That turn around and are just like, fuck you, dog. But they're always like, oh, like I've heard of lions and bears, and then they're like, oh, we're good. We're you always wrestle. hear these beautiful now sometimes they stories, do fuck them but, up. but a hippo if you have not watched can you go ahead i know this is gonna be a little bit longer and for the people who are actually still watching um bless you baby hippo fiona pretty good volumes from the bottle that looks like shorty was, uh, two to three weeks just shaved able to stop her. And then she started that's exactly how he does press. his little hoof <laughs> paw <laughs> thing <laughs> And she See, would not that looks exactly she like Shorty. This is not the video and, um, that I was thinking kind of about, but still. And I think that just looks like that a ball sack. That transparency and see everything we were doing for her. <laughs> it does. Really look, look at his little ears. It's like little Shrek ears. And Shorty has little Shrek ears. Like Baby, you can't tell me so that's amazing, just not so, so cute. And oh my really God. Helped. It was so nice to just... Have all that over if I could play with a baby hippo, that's what got us. I'm done. Really I'm good. I'm good. Those can't kill you, I don't think. No. Do you not? <laughs> Look at its mouth. Yeah, it looks like a little ball sack. Thing. It's little ears. bathing it in baby ball. Maybe it has to have like oil. Or maybe it was just dirty. What a little goober. Babe, how are you not just eating this up? I know what that thing becomes. It's just so cute. Like, that is the cutest fucking thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Oh, I'm sure it's so much cuter. Look at it! Here it is! Would you be scared of that little baby? No. I don't even think it has any teeth. Cute. 
Okay, okay. I've never seen this! Are you crying? No! Oh, wow. It's like gumming it. <laughs> Dude, if I could have any fucking job. Dude, wow. I would think it was dead as fuck. I'd yeah. be like, oh god, it fucking died in the fucking. Wow, I mean, seriously though, wait, is it just gonna. Oh. Is that a blanket underneath the water? I guess. Is that about the time when you'd start being yeah, like fucked up? Yeah, at that point, I'm not fucking with it. <laughs> when it could knock you over? Yeah. I'd still be. Okay, here's the problem. Oh my god, look at it. It looks like Shorty. My problem is I would be that dude who adopted it, or I would be like a zookeeper or whatever. You'd be that dude and who adopted it? I would be like that dude and be like, nah, we're best friends. And like it would be big as fuck, yeah. and uh, it would it would murder me. So yeah, some cute, wholesome videos to round out this video because what we watched before, I need to get it out of my mind. Just take it out, throw it around somewhere else. And that just reminded me of the video again because then the babies, uh, that joke that he made about what was it? Which animal was it? That they killed it. There was fucking hippos. It was hippos. Because he said their uh, baby shower. Mm. Big joke. Well, yeah, that video was supremely fucked up. Um, you tried to make it better and failed. Yep. Um, I'm glad you found some happiness and peace at the end of that, but I'm going to have to go bleach <laughs> my entire from here up. Just fry your brain. Just brain everything. Just done over it so yeah what video do you think was the absolute worst should we watch part two? Oh, we gotta watch part two now anyway we gotta watch part two but yeah how fucked up was that anyway uh, we hope you enjoyed the video and if you did you should seriously consider supporting casual geographic going over to his channel liking his videos checking his other stuff out uh checking out his patreon really follow him on instagram. on instagram <laughs> help him get verified um because he does wonderful work yes as you've seen here alone i think i think if you enjoyed our reaction to this multiple videos i guess uh then you could subscribe to our channel like this video you could even give us some suggestions yeah you can do that in the comments below or on our discord which we will have linked in the description and while we don't do it alone it's just the two of us so you would actually be helping us that's true and suggestions are something that gives us a fresh look at what's out there on youtube mm -hmm. because neither myself nor nikki are the biggest know-it-alls when it comes to the content that's out there on YouTube. We've only been doing this for a very short period of time, so any video recommendations would really help us. And you have already by watching this video, so thank you for that. But for this video, I think that's going to do it. See y'all.